Now, the COP26 climate conference is underway in Glasgow, with 200 countries sending delegates to the city. Thousands of protesters and activists have also descended, uh, including Nobel Peace Prize nominee Greta Thunberg, who was not invited to the official conference. Uh, well, let's speak now to Connor Tomlinson, who's head of research at the British Conservation Alliance and author of the report, It's Easy Being Green, for the Adam Smith Institute. He joins us now. Uh, Connor, uh, if only it was... <laughs> so easy being green. We're getting some pretty dire warnings from the Prime Minister as to where we are with this. Yeah, I, I would say the main issue with the speeches going forward, particularly for Prince Charles and Boris Johnson, are that they're using a lot of colourful imagery. As the Queen said, it seems to be a lot of talk but not much action. And when the actions are proposed, the sort of nonsense that Extinction Rebellion or Greta Thunberg puts out, which is big government spending, chasing away a lot of business opportunities in the country that are really going to, quote, level up opportunities for working people in Britain and around the world. Uh, and instead, they're, they're looking to throw you know billions into foreign aid for, for countries who can't quite adopt the technological advancements that we seem to want to adopt and aren't currently fit for purpose. So uh, it, it's pretty disturbing that it is easy being green if you leave it to the market, but governments want to spend a lot on their proposed inefficient solutions. Morning, Connor. Uh, was Greta Thunberg's invite lost in the post? What happened there? I thought at one point she said she wasn't going to be going because of the uh, carbon emissions involved in it. Now, that didn't stop her from sailing around the world and having to fly there and back and then, you know, hopping on the train around Germany and whatnot. Uh, I thought she was going to join Extinction Rebellion and doing their religious pilgrimage and walking from Spain to Britain or wherever. I think they probably need a good podiatrist by the end of that. But I don't know. If, uh, if I run into her there, I'll ask her myself. Mm. Connor, I mean, I, I appreciate a bit of humour. It has its place on a Monday morning. But... The whole point of this is, and, and the vast majority of people in all the polls uh, are now appreciating that we are in serious danger, that we are putting the lives of future generations at risk. I is there a sense that this is the moment where, frankly, we, we either do something or we lose this battle? Well, the IPCC report isn't quite as apocalyptic as a lot of the activists would claim. Uh, it seems the extreme weather projections, for example, they've said they're going to be the norm. We've accepted that, but if you look at the last couple of hundred years, the deaths from natural disasters has massively declined because of things like flood prevention technology, which are great innovations from the Dutch that they've exported to Bangladesh and saved a lot of lives there. So I think we can really overcome a lot of these challenges, again, if we just technologically innovate and we have the right sort of investment in the right, right places and right times. Um, I think the main concern is the use of this as as a sort of Trojan horse for majorly reshaping economies to be less market focused and a lot more government controlled as we saw under coronavirus. Now we're seeing the sort of same approach being taken, uh, especially with Biden trying to pass 3.5 trillion and packaging a lot of social stuff onto, onto the end of that, which will never pass through Congress, by the way, thank God. Um, but to say that we've got, oh, we've got to act now, otherwise the entire world will implode. I think a lot of us are sort of conservationists at heart. We like our local parks, we want clean air and water, but we don't think the sun wants going to descend from the sky to devour us. And we'd actually quite like these things costed so that they aren't a massive taxpayer expense and also implode the economic competitiveness of the West at the same time that China and Russia aren't taking up these measures. We've seen the likes of Insulate Britain, by the way, backed by Greta Thunberg. She's been quite vocal about that. Um, mm -hmm. Very active over the last couple of months to many's dismay. I mean, we've got one of the biggest security operations ever mounted in Britain up there in Glasgow. Are you expecting a, a lot of protesters to descend and, and, and be active I over this two weeks? I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of disruption, particularly because if you look at the leaders of Insulate Britain, a guy named Roger Hallam, who's been on your network before, uh, these sorts of people are egotists who are happy to jump at any opportunity to be on the media. Um, and I think the danger of it is anyone who's listening to these sort of extremist tactics validates the sort of eco-terrorism you're going to see. And Greta Thunberg turning around and saying, oh, we need to get angry and it's OK if nobody gets hurt. Well, somebody did get hurt. Somebody was permanently paralysed. There was also a four-car collision. And simply placing the uh, saying, oh, it's fine because, you know, nobody, nobody was that injured. Well, if these tactics can cause that level of risk to injury, I think it, it's designated non, it's not a peaceful protest. It is uh, coercive action for the citizenry to hold the government to account to try and pay billions for your harebrained schemes. Uh, I, I'm pretty damning about how many people will be up there, but hopefully they aren't listened to. The, the difficulty with this, Connor, and I, and I get where you're coming from, a lot of viewers uh, express similar views. But when you describe hair grain schemes, I mean, nobody's going to argue with the idea of insulating a house to, to prevent loss of heat from it. Uh, the, the, the issue is an important one. Aren't you belittling it a little too much with phrases like that? 
Well, no, because not every house has cavity wall insulation, for example. So anything built before the 30s can't really have this sort of stuff. Uh, as well, if you try and spray all your loft with a load of foam, a lot of places are going to get wood rot. So trying to unilaterally apply insulation in a lot of places won't work for a lot of homes. Um, also, the idea that millions of people are dying from fuel poverty, uh, the problem is the fuel price is not necessarily the insulation in that particular regard. And that's caused by the major gas supply lines that we've seen with the, the gas prices hiking up. And that's a problem with the international community essentially tanking their own energy sectors for ideological means. Germany scrapped all of their really safe, brilliantly working nuclear plants after Fukushima, and they went back to burning coal, and then Biden scrapped the Keystone XL pipeline. So America was a net oil exporter, now they're buying from Russia, and that sent all the gas prices up, and then also caused a CO2 shortage uh, for the domestic supply chains, because all the fertilizer companies decided, hey, we're not going to produce anything, because the gas is too high. So it's all of these issues are majorly uh, a problem from big government policy, and to say, oh, we want the government to expand even bigger and spend even more and, uh, on our particular policies that we're going to advance otherwise we're going to sit in the road well you if you're going to make the government expand even more to make all these policies you're going to internalize all the uh, risk and all of the errors that are going to result from these policies on the hard-working british taxpayer it's not easy being green is it it should be if you left it to the to the market and the government just got the hell out of the way and we'd be able to innovate um, but we could take all these, these arbitrary you know like the, the 2035 petrol car ban the the electric cars aren't going to catch up by then that china still makes 80 percent of the batteries we just lost our massive lithium deposits in afghanistan thanks by the way biden so if the government got out of the way with all these arbitrary targets it might be that mm. Interesting take. Well, let's, um, we'll, we'll talk again yeah, a, so, a little later once we've heard from brilliant. them. But th for now, Connor, thanks very much. Good to talk to you. Connor yeah. Tomlinson.